Hello there, this is Janos Makula for W Plus 9 and thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'll share an easy way to create a messy watercolor background for a card. Even if you are not a watercolor enthusiast, I think you'll find this way to watercolor very enjoyable. I'm going to be using W Plus 9 Autumn Leaves stamp set and I'm particularly interested in the outline images from here. Of course, you can use these with matching solid layers to quickly color them, but I want to use the outline to be able to create a watercolor background and watercolor these images. I've already placed three outline images onto clear blocks. Each image is on its own block to make the stamping process go a little faster. And I also have a piece of watercolor paper. Usually I love to use Arches cold press watercolor paper for my watercolors, but I'm all out of this particular paper and since I'll be moving soon, I'm not ordering any to my old address. The paper that I have here is Daler Roni, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's Aquafine cold press watercolor paper. It's an okay kind of paper and does the job well. When it comes to watercolor, your paper is what matters most. You can have the most high quality watercolors and use really bad paper and you'll end up having results that are not so great. If you'd like to learn more about watercolor, I recommend you take Dawn's Watercolor for Card Makers class from OnlineCardClasses.com. It will blow your mind. Now let's go back to the card. I'm going to use W plus 9 Coconut Husk Dye Ink. This is a very rich brown ink and it is also waterproof which is very important for this technique. You want to use ink that will not bleed when it comes in contact with water. So I'm going to stamp the three leaf outlines that I selected in this brown ink onto my background. Now I'm overlapping the images slightly, not too much, but just a little bit so that it appears as if they are all connected. Now I'm not doing any masking here, as I'd rather this doesn't take too long and I've started with the largest image, stamped it a few times, added a medium image and finally stamped the small leaf. And I kept on stamping in this fashion until I had the entire background of my card or my watercolor panel filled. And right now I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I will add one more maple leaf at the top of this background later when I start watercoloring. I'll realize that I only have four leaves and I'll need to add one more to have an odd number on my card. And you want to have odd number of elements on your projects, especially if these are the elements that stand out most. And since that maple leaf is going to be watercolored in red, it's best to have it stamped and watercolored an odd number of times. I'm going to use the most simple watercolors out there, Distress Inks, and I've picked three colors to start with. Here I have Peeled Paint, Festive Berries, and Wild Honey. I also have a medium sized water brush with a good water flow and for this technique I prefer to have a brush that lets more water out. I find I'm never happy with my results if my brush is too dry. You can use a regular paint brush for this of course, but it is easier to control the amount of water you have in your brush when using a water brush. I've squeezed a bit of ink from each ink pad onto my DIY watercolor palette. This is just a sheet of white cardstock inserted into a piece of plastic. And I'm going to start watercoloring. So the trick here is not to worry and is not to color every section. In other words, don't try to fill the entire stamped image with color. Do leave some sections blank or white. That is the key. And this way of watercoloring is actually very simple. I find it to be stress-free and very enjoyable. There is no science here, no wrong or right. You just want to make sure you're leaving some white sections on your images. Now I've cleaned my brush and I use my hand for that all the time. So in case you ever notice my right hand has a weird color to it, now you know why. And so I started coloring the second type of leaf, uh, the second leaf image using green. I'm using the exact same approach here and making sure to leave a little bit of white space. Finally, I cleaned the brush again and moved on to the last color, red color and the last leaf. Where my images overlap, I mostly did not overlap the color. So if I had already colored it in yellow, I would not add green over it. However, I did do that in one or two spots in this background. As I finished coloring, I decided to add additional detail using darker colors. You can by all means use this background as is. I think it already looks awesome, but I wanted to add shadows. I went with more Distress inks and I used Forest Moss for the green and added just lines of this darker green to my leaves. To add yellow shadows, I used Spice Marmalade 
And to add red shadows, I went with candied apple. You can also add drops of white pigment or just add drops of water to lift up distress ink in some sections or even watercolor the space in between the leaves with, uh, say, a light blue color for a light background. I'm also going to stamp this adorable little poppy using the same ink, the coconut husk color, and will once again use my distress inks and the same messy and loose watercoloring technique to color this little guy. I'm using Gather Twix as well as Tea Dye to color his body and some of the red that I already have on my palette to color the basket he's holding. I'm going to cut him out using a matching dye and will set him onto a layer of vellum. I'm also going to heat emboss a sentiment that reads, with much gratitude, onto vellum using copper embossing powder from Hero Arts. I was going for a fun card here, so I have the puppy giving the basket with bones and saying, with much gratitude. But of course you can use whatever sentiment you'd like, or stick with this sentiment and skip the puppy, or maybe use another critter that you like. Now the reason I went with copper embossing powder is so that it would match the color of the ink I used to stamp the outlines. It's not 100% match, but it is very close. To finish this card, I adhered my watercolor background onto an A2 top folding card base. I trimmed my watercolor panel because it was a little bit too big. Next, I adhered my puppy onto the vellum panel and foam mounted that onto the background. So the vellum was only attached in one place, behind the puppy. I also embellished this card with several clear drops in various sizes and I adhered one of the large drops overlapping both the background and the vellum panel. Here's a closer look at this card with a messy watercolor background. Now I also wanted to share another background I did where I used black ink to stamp the image outlines. And I mostly added just one layer of watercolor, there are very little shadows here on this second background. Thank you so much for joining me today, be sure to check out wplus9.com for more creative inspiration. See you next time, bye!